Yo, what's going on dudes? Hopefully everyone is doing okay. So I thought I'd start a little mini-series just going over some Mod 2 stuff. Because people are taking lessons again, they're sitting their tests again. So I thought what I'd do is just make a little series going over what to expect in the Mod 2 what things you do, what you should be training for, all that sort of stuff. And also the examiner's going to ask you to do certain things as well. So we'll go over all that. But what I thought I'd do on the first episode is just give you a few tips on the Mod 2, alright? Things that helped me. And at the end of the video, what we'll do is we'll do a little segment on the show me, tell me and pillion passenger questions. So the first thing I will tell you, when I was training for my Mod 2, like everybody else, you go into Google, you go into YouTube, you do your own little bit of research here and there. And one thing I saw quite a lot, whether it was people just, you know, trying to freak people out or what, or just trying to make people nervous for their tests, a lot of people were saying that the examiner will intentionally try and catch you out. I can tell you right now that it's absolutely rubbish, alright? <laughs> the examiner is not going to try and catch you out. He's not going to make you do something to try and make you fail the test, alright? That's not his job. If the examiner is going to ask you to do something, the reason he's asking you to do it is to make sure that you can do what he's asking you to do. He wants to make sure that once you get out into the real world, and you come across a certain situation, you're going to be able to deal with it. You've had the training, and you're going to be able to deal with any situation that arises, alright? That's all he's doing, he's not trying to catch you out, he doesn't want to see you fail, why would he want to see you fail? He wants to see more bikers on the road. So if you've heard that from anybody, or you've read it online, it's just a myth, alright? It's not true, so don't worry. Alright, so the next thing I'd say is just relax. Try and not get, you know, worked up or nervous or get into a wee panicked state or anything like that. When the instructor gives you an instruction, he's not going to give you it, you know, 10 metres before he wants you to do it. He's going to give you loads of time to hear what he say, process it, and then get ready to do whatever it is he wants you to do. So when you hear that instruction, just relax. Don't go, oh my god, right, he's asked me to do this, he's asked me to do that. Just relax, alright? He's asked you to turn left at the next junction. Okay, I know what I have to do. Mirrors, mirrors, signal, lifesaver, you know, move into whatever position it is you need to move into, get ready to make the turn. So you just do that through the whole test. When he gives you an instruction, relax, don't panic about it. If you don't hear what he said, or it's muffled, or you didn't understand, just shake your head, all right, and he will repeat it. Okay, so the next thing is, if you accidentally go the wrong way, say he asks you to take the second, exit at a roundabout and you accidentally take the third or you're in the lane to take the third exit don't panic again stay relaxed stay calm what you should really be doing there is don't try and fix it because you might end up making a mistake because you might end up causing another road user a problem what to do is just stay in that lane and just take the third exit all right it means you're going a different direction to what he asked but as long as you do it safely and in the correct manner, then you're not going to get a minor for it. All he'll do is, he might say, you know, or oh, you took the wrong exit there or whatever, but all he'll do is he'll give you another instruction. All right, so you shouldn't get a minor for that because essentially you did everything safe, all right? And it's not part of the independent riding either. We'll go over that in a second. But all you've done is you've taken the wrong exit, and as long as you do it safely, there shouldn't be a problem. So what is the Module 2 and what can you expect to happen on the day of your test? So Mod 2 is your Module 2 of your bike licence. It's basically the final stage before you get given your full licence in the UK. If you're under 24, obviously you'll get a restricted licence, which means the bike that you ride will have slightly less power. But if you're over 24, you can ride whatever you want. So in order to get to the Module 2 stage, you obviously have to sit your CBT, which is your compulsory basic training. You have to sit a theory test. You have to sit your module one test, which is slow maneuver stuff, emergency brake, you know, all that sort of stuff, making sure that you can control the bike properly. I'll leave a link up in the top corner. You can go and check that out. I did make a video on that many, many months ago. And then after that, you have the module two. 
So on the day, what happens is you turn up at the test centre with your instructor. Obviously because of the current pandemic and social distancing and sanitisation and things, it might take a wee bit longer to get set up than normal because of obviously, you know, you've got to get strapped up with a radio and stuff like that. So things might just take a wee bit longer to get started, but don't worry about that. So the first thing he's going to do is go over the details, make sure he's got the right person. He's then going to ask you to do the eyesight test, which I think is 20 metres from what I can remember. So basically he'll get you to read a licence plate from 20 metres away. Now if you wear glasses or you have to wear contact lenses, make sure you have them in or you have your glasses with you. Because if you fail the eyesight test, you won't get out on the road. So I don't know if that would be a fail, I'm not too sure. You're not going out in the road, so you're not getting your mod to that day, either way. So if you have to wear glasses or contacts, please make sure you have them. So next would come the show me, tell me part of the test. There's three questions you'll get asked all together. You'll get asked two show me, tell me questions, and you'll get asked one Pelion passenger question. We'll go over that at the end. We'll go over all the questions and all the Pelion questions. But basically, there are 13 show me, tell me questions. Essentially, it's only 12. One of them is about a fog light, so it's not very common unless the bike you're on has a fog light on it. So the chances of you getting asked that question is pretty slim. We'll go over it anyway, but you'll have your two show me, tell me, and your one pillion passenger. So what happens if you get one or all of the questions wrong? You only get one minor, that's it. You don't get one minor per wrong question, all right? It's a section of the test where if you get them all wrong, it's only one minor. But of course, try your best to learn them and try your best to answer them as best as you can so you don't get a minor. You, you don't want that minor on your test before you've even started the motorbike. You know what I mean? So I just try and nail them before you get on the bike Then you've got a nice clean slate for when you head out on the road. So when it does come to minors on your test, you're allowed 10 minors and then it's a fail. I got two minors on my test. I did speak about it in the Mod 2 video. I got one for a wrong signal, which was my mistake. I knew for a fact I'd made a mistake when I did it. It was on the independent riding part of the test. And then the second minor was a speeding fault, which I disagreed with, but I didn't kind of debate the guy about it because he just gave me my license, you know? So, water under the bridge. So once you've got all that done, what he'll do is he'll get you radioed up, he'll put a radio on you. Obviously, like I said, because of the social distancing, it can take a wee bit longer, because rather than him doing it, he just basically, he, he put the radio down and asked me to do it. So I had to put it up and he just kind of told me how to connect things and all that sort of stuff. So that takes a wee bit longer. Once that's done, he'll do a little test to make sure that you can hear him. He'll ask you if it's too loud or too quiet, and then he, obviously he'll tell you beforehand how to adjust it, if you need to adjust it. And then that's it, you're ready for your test. He'll basically say, jump on the bike, get ready, and then you just wait for his first instruction. So that's pretty much all there is in the build-up to getting onto the road. It doesn't take too long, maybe four to five minutes, just to get everything set up and get the questions done. So obviously, depending where your test centre is, how it's located, our test centre is pretty much right next to a main road, so you'd leave the test centre onto a main road. I have saw some test centres where there's quite long roads from like industrial estates and stuff like that to get onto the road. That's not the case with my test centre, so depending on where you stay and where you take your test, it'll be different on, on your first instruction. Mine was just turn left out of the test centre, that's all he said. So he basically said, when you're ready, turn left out of the test centre. So what can you expect to happen during that 30 minute ride? So the examiner is going to ask you to do a number of different things. He's going to ask you to pull over to the side of the road. I think it's about four times from what I can remember, maybe even five. And the reason he's doing that is he's making sure the A, you're checking your mirrors, you're using your indicators right, you're doing your shoulder checks. He wants to make sure that when you're pulling, pulling over at the side of the road, you're doing it safely. And of course, when you go to move off, he wants to make sure that you're doing that safely and correctly as well. So he's going to ask you to do that multiple times. A couple of the times aren't going to be just basic moving off. One of them is going to be an angled start. He's going to ask you to pull up behind a parked vehicle. And what he wants to see is if for some reason, you know, you were parked behind a car or a car parked in front of your motorbike and you had limited space and you had to do basically get the bike out at an angle, you can do that no problem. So it's an angled start. And it's nice and simple. If you nailed your mod one stuff, you'll have absolutely no problem with the angle start. This stuff happens throughout your test. It's not going to happen in the space of five minutes. It'll just be random when it asks you to do it. So just be aware that he might ask you to pull over at any point. Obviously, like I said, when he gives you an instruction, he's not going to say pull over now. 
he's going to say pull over you know on the left when it's safe to do so so you've got enough time to prepare to do whatever it is you need to do so you've had pulling over to the side of the road you've had angled start and then he'll ask you to do a hill start don't worry about the hill start if it's something you're struggling with obviously go over it with your examiner but after my test when i got back i said to my instructor i says he didn't ask me to do a hill start he's like trust me he would have it's just that I was totally unaware because when we've been practicing the hill starts, we've been practicing on really steep roads <laughs> to make sure that wherever he asked us to do one, we'd have absolutely no problem. So I was totally unaware that I did one. Didn't even know I did it. So just get a wee practice with the hill starts, you'll be absolutely fine. So you've got pulling over at the side of the road, you've got angle start, and you've got hill start. Majority of the test is you just going to be riding about. He wants to observe your riding in general. So he'll tell you at the start, you know, if I don't give you any instructions, just keep following the road. But make sure when you're doing that, you're doing all your mirror checks, you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing. So then comes the independent riding part of the test. That lasts about 10 minutes. And basically what it is, is he wants to make sure that you can navigate using road signs. So rather than saying take the second exit or whatever, he would say take the road for the A91. So you'd basically have to make sure that you've read the sign you take the appropriate lane and do the appropriate checks and whatever you know all your safety checks observations and then that goes on for about 10 minutes it's fairly straightforward you know if you know the area you'll be absolutely fine if it's somewhere you're not aware of just make sure that you're scanning every road sign one thing i will tell you about the independent riding is it can happen anywhere in the test it won't come at the end of the test that's actually where i got my first minor on my mod 2 because i assumed for whatever reason i don't know why i assumed it was going to be the last part of the test and as soon as i came out the test center the first thing he said to me was we're going to go into the independent riding and that threw me off guard i was like whoa what <laughs> i was like what and then he gave me an instruction because i was still trying to take it in I'd done the wrong signal, but I cancelled it pretty much as soon as I did it, but he gave me a minor for it, so it can happen any time on your test. So that's really about it dudes, that's all that's involved with the Mod 2. You've got your pulling over at the side of the road, angled start, hill start, independent riding, and then just the general riding, riding about for your 30 minutes, whatever it is. When he gives you an instruction, listen to it, take it in, and then do the necessary requirements, whatever it may be. Don't miss any lifesaver checks. I'm going to go over that in the next video. I'm going to go over road positioning and observations. So we'll talk more about lifesavers and mirror checks then. But make sure that when you're doing anything, observations must be present throughout the whole test. All right, the whole test. So what we'll do is we'll go and park up and we'll go over the show me, tell me questions and the pillion passenger questions. Show me, tell me questions. There's 13 questions that you can get asked. Like I said, one of them, the chance of you getting asked is pretty slim. But it's worth knowing it anyway, just in case. Excuse the dirty bike, she hasn't been washed this week. <laughs> so she needs to get under the pressure washer. But I'll leave a link to all the websites that I personally used while learning the show me, tell me and the pillion passenger stuff. I found them to have lots of information and it really helped when it came to getting those, uh, getting those answers right. So I will leave it in the descriptions. The first one is identify where you would check the engine oil level and tell me how you would check that the engine has sufficient oil. So the thing about show me tell me is some questions you have to physically touch the bike and show the examiner, other questions you just tell. So identify where you would check the engine oil level. So this one isn't actually a show me, it's just a tell question so he's asking you to identify. So when you're checking the oil what you want to make sure is that the bike isn't on the side stand if it has a center stand put it on the center stand otherwise you can put it on a paddock stand if you have one or make sure the just make sure the bike is upright and there will be a sight glass you want to make sure that the oil is between the lower and the full right in between the middle and if you have a dipstick what you want to do is again make sure that the bike's upright take the dipstick out clean it put it back in take it out and check it because obviously if you just take it out without cleaning it and putting it back in. The bike's been leaning over and you know, things like that. So you're gonna get an, ac an accurate reading. So make sure that you take it out, clean it, 
put it back in and then take it out to check it so just tell them that that's how you would do it if you want brownie points you could also mention about the color of the oil you don't want it being black and dirty or white or anything like that so um, that's how you would check the engine oil so the next one is a show question show me how you would check that the horn is working on this machine nice and simple you turn on the ignition I'm not going to do it here because there's a lot of people about driving but you'd switch on the ignition boop you take the horn make sure you switch the ignition off after you've done that identify where the brake fluid reservoir is and tell me how you would check that you have a safe level of hydraulic fluid so you want to identify where it is so you basically say the reservoir is up on the handlebars right here and again just like with the oil you want to make sure that the fluid is between the lower and the full and if you wanted to you could also say you could put the bike upright to get a more accurate reading tell me how you would check that the lights and reflectors are clean and working so this is just a tell me question again so you don't physically have to turn anything on or push any buttons you explain you turn the ignition on you'd flick the switches for the lights you would go around and make sure that all the lights and reflectors are working and clean because obviously if they're not clean people aren't going to be able to see them so the next one is show me how you would check that the brake lights are working so this one is a show so you'd switch on the ignition depend you can do it from either side of the bike it's entirely up to you for what i prefer to do i prefer to do it from this side so you do that put your hand behind the brake light and you can see it coming on and then do the same with the with the rear light and then again make sure and switch off the ignition tell me how you would check the condition of the chain on this machine so this it's just a tell me one so you don't physically have to touch the chain and get all covered in oil and dirt and anything like that so there are a few questions in here where it's better if you mention manufacturer's handbook in the in the answer and this is one of them so you basically check the chain for any signs of wear you would make sure that it has the correct tension you'd also want to make sure the rear wheel is in the right alignment obviously you don't want a wobbly rear wheel but for the chain tension what you could say is for the actual chain tension i would refer to the manufacturer's handbook all right because that's the kind of stuff they wants to hear show me what checks you would make on the steering movement before using the machine nice and simple and this is a show me so you physically it's easier to stand the bike up rather than try to do it in the side stand stand it up and just do full lock left and right tell me how you would check your tires to ensure that they are correctly inflated have sufficient tread depth and that their general condition is safe to use on the road you'd want to mention that you would get the correct tire pressure out of the manufacturer's handbook you need to have a minimum of one mil tread some tires actually have like a little notch in it like a little kind of knobbly bit and when the tire tread gets down to that that's it at a mil so then you know that the tire needs to change i don't think these one have it but some of them do have that you could mention that if you want as well as the tread being one mil in depth it needs to cover three quarters width of the wheel around the whole circumference of the wheel you also need to do a physical inspection so you're checking for any bulges any cracks splits anything that could cause the tire any issues while you're out on the road show me how you would check the operation of the front brake on this machine so another show me once all you do is you take the bike up off the stand you don't physically have to put the stand away but it's up to you take it up and then just move it forward and hit the front brake and that's it back down if you do lift the stand when you do that make sure and put it back down before you try and lean the bike back over right so the next one okay show me how you would check the operation of the brakes on this machine try and not get these two mixed up because the previous question is very very similar show me how you would check the operation of the front brake all right the one we just did would be put the bike up and you push it forward and pull the brake but this one is show me how you would check the operation of the brakes on the machine so the answer is check for excess travel on the brake lever and brake pedal and for any unusual play or sponginess all right now it says on here it's a show me question but this is actually one of the questions i got asked on my test and i went to show him and he says no 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 he says tell me so i don't know what's going on with that so whether they've updated it to a tell me question or he just gets people to tell them i don't know maybe it was just that one specific examiner but basically you want to make sure that there's no excess travel on the brake pedal or the brake lever and there's no sponginess and you know it's a, it's a nice tight lever show me how you would check the operation of the engine cutout switch so nice and simple you switch on the ignition don't do it with the bike started because you can't affect the battery once the ignition's on wait for it to do its little start up thing if your bike does that flick the switch flick it back off again so make sure and flick it back off again don't leave it on and then switch off your ignition so this one is show me how you would switch on the rear fog light and explain when you would use it so this is the one you're 
might not get asked but anyway how you'd switch it on there would be a switch up here somewhere and you would use it when visibility was less than 100 meters and show me how you switch your headlight from dip to main beam so this will show me one as well so switch on the ignition wait for your instrument panel to sort itself out and then you'd flick the light switch you'd also explain that the light would come up on the dashboard to indicate that we're on full beam and switch it off Remember and turn your ignition off again. So that's all the questions. So there's not a lot to it. If you spend a bit hour or two just at home going over the questions and then go over it with your instructor. You know, if if you have a bike at home, even better. You can go out and practice it on your own bike. If not, just make sure you're getting a bit of practice time with the instructor. Right, so you'll get asked two of those questions and then you'll get asked one pillion question so there's a couple of different pillion questions it depends what website you use some websites i've noticed only have three questions some have more the website i use i'll leave it in the description as well had about five questions so it really went over it thoroughly which was really good so a lot of it is information for the rider as well so it's handy to know that but um, if you're just looking for the answer they have a basic explanation on the answer so legally what is required on a motorcycle to carry a passenger. So legally, you need a rear seat and you also need rear foot pegs. So in terms of safety, what would you advise a pillion passenger? So the first thing you have to make sure is they're wearing an approved helmet. Make sure you say approved, all right? He wants to make sure that you're saying approved helmet, not just some Chinese thing you bought off a of wish, you know? <laughs> so they're, they're wearing an approved helmet and also have safe riding gear on, gloves, boots, jackets, trousers. How would you advise an inexperienced rider to sit on the back? Now this might sound silly, but you have to say, you need to tell them to make sure they're facing forward. <laughs> I know it's silly, but it is actually part of the answers, you know. Whether somebody would actually sit facing the opposite way, unless they're on a stunt team, I don't really see why they would do that, but yeah, make sure they're facing the right way. They also need to mount and dismount from the kerb side, so in the UK it's from the left side. They also need to make sure that both feet are securely on the foot pegs, one hand on the rail and one hand on the rider's shoulder, that way they can compensate for braking and accelerating. Tell them not to fidget around, sit still, don't lean when you're not leaning, you know, and look over your shoulder, you know, don't try and peek away out, because if you peek out, you're going to cause the bike to lean. And when you're accelerating, lean forward with the rider so you're not getting pushed back. I mean, some of that is just general information, you don't really need to go into that much detail. I will leave this site in the description, like I said, and you can go and kind of go over the answers and see what it is. But basically, foot pegs, grab rail, and shoulder, that's pretty much what I said. And it was fine. Before carrying a pillion passenger, what adjustments might you want to consider making to the motorcycle? All right, so obviously you're gonna have to think about the extra weight. So you're gonna have to adjust the tire pressure in the rear wheel. Again, manufacturer's handbook. You might need to adjust the rear shock. Again, manufacturer's handbook. You'd have to adjust the mirrors because obviously the bike's gonna be sitting at a slightly different angle. So you need to adjust the mirrors. You might need to adjust the headlight. Also, the front, end is going to feel just that bit lighter as well and the chain might potentially need to um, adjust it as well again manufacturer's handbook for that so how will the extra weight of the pillion passenger affect the handling of the motorcycle so first of all it's going to affect the balance isn't it balance and stability is affected due to the motorcycle becoming top heavy particularly at lower speeds all right so it's going to affect the balance of the motorcycle it's also going to affect your braking distances and your acceleration time and it'll affect cornering as well so make sure that everything's nice and smooth when going around the corner so I don't know if this one's actually a pillion passenger question or not, but other than a pillion passenger, what else might affect a motorcycle? Strong winds, alcohol, a motorcycle that isn't maintained, additional weight such as luggage, and um, badly maintained roads. All right, so there's only really about four or five questions there, so there's not a lot to it, to be honest. So that is about it for the show me, tell me, and the pillion passenger. I will leave all this stuff in the description below for you guys to go and check out. So that's what you can expect to happen on your Mod 2 test. So there's not really a lot to it. As long as you relax, take your time, you'll be absolutely fine. The same with the show me, tell me. Just spend a bit of time practicing them, going over them, and you'll be absolutely fine. But if you have any tests coming up, whether it be a, a Mod 2, Mod 1 theory test, best of luck with it. I hope you get past it. And if you've enjoyed this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate every single one of your likes. And of course, if you want to see all of my uploads, click on that subscribe button and ring the bell while you're there. You get notified every time I upload a video. But until next time, guys, stay safe and take it easy.